wanted to give an update on one of the projects I've been working on. Uh, it's concerning the Jetson Nano. So I've been experimenting with uh, running the Isaac Ross April tag detection uh, on the Jetson Nano. And I noticed that when I would run multiple nodes within the image pipeline and the, the Lib Argus camera nodes, um, with the April tags running on top of all that, the temperatures on the Jetson Nano with the original heat sink wasn't, uh, really wasn't too great. It was above 60 C and, um, you know, above a certain temperature, the, the Jetsons will, they'll, the, uh, thermal, the thermals will cause throttling of the CPU. I invested in the Noctua NF. A4 fan. It's the PWM supported fan and unfortunately I got the wrong version. I got the 12 volt. I would advise getting the 5 volt but the 12 volt will still work. You'll, you can still use the 5 volt uh, PWM, PWM line. So this is a great fan by the way. It doesn't, it's not that expensive and you just need to get the, the, the mounting hardware in the right connector for whatever carrier board you have for your Jetson Nano. I have the, the Seed A206 carrier board. And it used to, it used to be the Jetson 1021, I believe, um, the carrier board that comes with that model. I think Seed has now updated their model lineup to have different model names. So I'm not sure what it's called now, but it's, it's the Jetson Nano production model module. Um, but it has the four USB and the NVMe um, M.2. So right now on my Jetson Nano, I have I have a 256 gigabyte uh, NVMe drive. So I'm running that, um, and then I now have this fan connected. All right, to install the fan, you're going to need a couple things. You're going to have to figure out based on your carrier board what kind of fan connector you're going to need, and splice it with the Noctua fan. So I'll put a picture of the Noctua fan pin out. And this is a four pin uh, PWM fan. So you're gonna have the ground voltage, the PWM signal and the RPM signal. So I looked at the Noctua pin out and I made kind of like a, an adapter cable with the Molex Pico blade which is the type of fan connector I have on the Seed Studio A206 carrier board. And so once you adapt the Noctua fan, um, when you plug this in on this, the Seed carrier, the leftmost pin when looking at the board uh, with facing the USB ports is going to be ground, then your 5 volts uh, voltage, then the tachometer, and lastly is the PWM line. So I'm going to plug this in. To mount the fan, there's a couple ways you can do this. I use the M2.5 25 millimeter, and I use some washers on the top. These screws are going to be long enough to go past the top lip of the heat sink, and then you can use a nut to secure it. Mine are secured on the heat sink, so it's not going anywhere. And then you want to factor in the orientation of the fan. I've chosen to have the fan blow into the heat sink. Um, others may say, hey, you want to blow out. Um, it's kind of a matter of preference. I'm not sure which one is going to give you better cooling. However, I, I don't really see too much of a difference whether you're blowing into the heat sink or you're sucking in the, the hot air. So we're going to plug this guy in. Now you can mess with your fan profiles. Um, I'll show you how I have mine set up. So I recommend a couple of software uh, tools to monitor your Jetson temperatures with the Noctua fan. The first one's going to be Jetson Stats, and you can go on this repo. And as long as you have uh, Python 3, you use the pip install method. And then to run, you just type in JTOP, and you'll be able to pull up the GUI. It'll have a 
lot of stats for you to look at. The next repo uh, that you will need to do the fan control is the Jetson Fan TTL. That's a service that runs a boot and you install this and you're able to control the fan PWM. The next software tool that you can use, and this comes on the Jetson Nano, it's pre-installed in Jetpack, that's gonna be Tegrastats. Now, Tegrastats is uh, just a command line tool and it's doesn't it gives you a lot of information but it doesn't really present it in a way that's really you can really parse it um it's kind of just spits out all this the temperatures and frequencies and uh it's a little it's useful yes but i, I prefer i definitely prefer the jets and stats utility so we run this and we're able to see uh, in a graphical representation uh, we're looking at the fan percentage um, and then we're also looking at the AO temps CPU GPU and usually I'll, I'll look at AO but I'll also look at CPU so right now we're running at 46 for AO and CPU is 40 and keep in mind you want to be plugged into the DC power jack for this to really for this to really um, be useful for, for PWM fan control. Also, I'm running uh, Jetpack 30 and the Linux for Tegra 32.6.1. And you want to also make sure Jetson Clocks is running. That should run based on, I believe, the, the Auto Magic fan control. I think once you have that installed without it, you won't see anything with the fan percentage and you won't see Jetson Clocks running. So you can also control the fan by echoing uh, standard input uh, to the fan, but um, that goes a little bit, a little bit too deep in the weeds for this kind of tutorial. We're just trying to get started, um, trying to get some benchmarks. And keep in mind, I am recording, running the recording software, and you can see the AO, CPU, GPU, PLL, thermal, and then you can see the processors are kind of pegged right now, probably because I'm running screen capture software. Fan is at 100%, um, but notice that we're still in the yellow. Uh, we're not above 60C. And then I'm gonna show what I'm running with the tag detections. So with the tag detections, I'm holding up an April tag. Um, that's running. You can see the frames per second is a little low. Usually it's around 30, but I, I, like I said, we're running the screen capture software, so that's not negligible. So right now you can see the tag detections. It's printing out the pose, uh, the covariance, and uh, the detection family. It's running about 20 frames per second. Let me let me run the frames per second counter again. So yeah, the frames per second is around 21. We're getting tag detections. Let's go back to thermals. Still not bad. Uh, it's not looking too bad. If I stop running screen capture software, uh, I have a feeling the, the cores utilization will go down as well as the uh, temperatures a little bit, but 54, 55. Mm -hmm. C for the AO, CPU, GPU, PLL thermals, not looking too bad. So running this without a knock to a fan, I was getting above 60C for running what I'm running here in ROS2 Foxy. So this is probably about a 10C difference if I had to throw a number out there. And that's that's a pretty good um, that's a pretty good situation, and the fan's running full tilt right now. So I think this was definitely a successful project. I think it was worth, I think I paid like maybe 15, 20 bucks for the whole setup with the fan and the mounting hardware. Um, the Molex connectors probably aren't too difficult to get a hold of. If you have the developer kit or another carrier board, um, I know the developer kit comes with the standard ATX fan, so you shouldn't have to build an adapter cable for that. And that's pretty much how I got set up and running with the Noctua fan. There wasn't really a lot out there as far as um, real good detailed guide on how to get this set up and running and really do some benchmarks and stress testing. And I think uh, with me running the, the ROS2 image pipeline, the accelerated April tag, um, so I'm, I'm utilizing CPU and GPU and then running the LibArgus 
camera node. Um, I think this was definitely a success. Uh, I think the fan made a pretty sizable difference in thermals and I'm not throttled by any means right now. So definitely a win in my book.